for what I see for the future uh, of Georgia film is that it will become a state occupation where we'll also not be just a location state, but we'll have above the line people who will be able to green light. We'll bring people in who will be able to educate our industries on how to on how to finance and how to to give. We've already got uh, entertainment lawyers here who are helping us build like a firm foundation. We've got the tax credits exploded the industry here, two to three billion dollars of annual direct spend. So a lot more in economic impact as well. So we've seen that and we're gonna see that growth com continue. I was a meeting with the head of IOTC 479, the union that does a lot of the work on films. He's expecting it to double again within the next few years. It's been doubling every few years already. Obviously, on my end, on the game side, we've already seen the game industry explode here. We're now the seventh largest in the country. We've got $550 million economic impact here, thousands of people working in games. This month, the two hottest virtual reality games in the world have come or are coming out of Georgia. Tripwire's Killing Floor Incursion. It's the number one thing that Facebook is pushing for Oculus right now. That launched in the middle of the month. Tuesday, CCP is releasing Spark, and that's going to be the big one from Sony. So the next area to explode is definitely animation. The big news, though, is that Floyd County and the other animation houses aren't stopping there. Everybody right now is seeing how successful it is here, and they're trying to throw animation work down here. I mean, it's everybody trying to throw it. Netflix has already announced that uh, America, the motion picture, is going to be <laughs> created here in Georgia, I believe, by Floyd County. So right now, the need is for really talented and really reliable digital artists and animators. So the future of entertainment in Georgia is y'all. We're already exploding. We're the fifth largest um, house for animators in the nation. So if you're going to be an animator in the U.S., this is definitely a place for you to be. The Bureau of Labor Statistics has already anticipated in the next five years us having 4,300 um, new jobs just in animation and in new media. Uh, so when I think about where people are going with animation and the fact that open source is changing the game, a lot of studios are moving towards cheaper and cheaper animation tools, which means more and more content. And because we have uh, open source for distribution with YouTube and with Twitch and with other um, streaming um, programs online, you're able to have more diverse content from more diverse uh, creators. So it's no longer Hollywood has a monopoly over who gets to say what, and it's no longer them pushing their ideals on you. Uh, viewers, I uh, believe in 2016, AT&T Foundry did a study that said, now it's 50-50 with the content that people want to view when it comes to um, consumption. So it's gonna be 50-50 uh, between what Hollywood is saying, this is what we think you should think. And then the other 50% is what you think Hollywood should be showing you. So Netflix is changing it up right now with their original content. You see that happening with Hulu. And you even see that happening with Facebook, who just joined with College Humor. And they're going to start making original content based on the algorithms that you have input, saying that this is the content we want to see. Atlanta, Georgia, one of the things for, like, for years, one of the things we've had kind of this complex about we're not New York, we're not L.A., um, you know, whether you be in animation, whether it be in art, whether it be in film. And at some point, what happens is, is you get to a certain point in your career and you have to make this choice about, do I leave Atlanta? Do I leave Georgia? And over the last like 10 years, I say even before the tax incentive came into place, things have started changing. In the last five years, that's really kind of accelerated. So the real future to me of entertainment Georgia is the fact that people really now have a choice about staying here in Georgia, staying here in Atlanta, and really building their careers, and really figuring out like what they want to do. And a part of that is also the fact that we're now really becoming like a real huge community. Like we, One of the things that's been an advantage that Atlanta and Georgia's had um, over most states outside of maybe New York and LA and a few places like Austin um, is that we've always had a sizable crew base. Um, we've had a large number of schools. Um, we have had an advantage that a lot of other places haven't. And we're really starting to see that um, really come to fruition as this community kind of grows. This conference would not exist at this point. Like if this was like five, 10 years ago, this conference would not be feasible because it really, while there was always lots of animators, while there was always lots of talent, that actual like connection, that sense of community, that kind of interaction, the type of things like GPP has been trying to build up and GGDA trying to build up the last like 15, 20 years really hasn't existed. So to me, 
the future of Georgia is really, no matter what, is that that really what has distinguished Atlanta and Georgia in general from every other entertainment nexus I've seen is the willingness of everybody to work together. In Texas, we've had film and games fight over tax credits. We don't see the 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 New York's got this epicenter, but again, they don't work together. Here, everybody is coming together, supporting each other's efforts, building up the talent base, building up the great productions here, and there really is nowhere with that sort of um, that sort of combined strength that I've seen. You know, to me, Burbank is animation right now. That's where all of the studios are. But literally, those guys have, in the last year, I've been talking to pretty much most of those animation studios. What's also great, which parallels what we've seen in the gaming industry, is some of our the the companies that have been here long are continually growing and adding. So um, what's really exciting about that is uh, Bento Bots being one of the bigger ones we got here. They're literally right now in Pinewood shooting a movie um, for two years. So um, it's all about workforce. So even when the companies come here, and like I think we covered two or two or three of the other important things, obviously quality of, of a quality of life, cost of living great airport and all those things we can brag about Atlanta, but it literally is you guys. They, they want to know that this workforce is going to be there. Um, these guys are cheap. I'm not going to curse. They're cheap as, <laughs> and if they can find it here, believe me, they will jump on it in a heartbeat. And, um, and the good thing is they're finding it. And uh, it's just nothing like to me walking in a place and I, I always mess around like, okay, where are you from? And, oh, I went to school with SCAD or I went to school at an art institute or I, and I, I, I say, you never want to go to Hollywood. You want Hollywood to come to you. So if you are a singer and you tell me you're a singer and I come and ask you, okay, sing. And you say, well, the weather's not good or my voice is so cracking or then I don't take you seriously. It's the same thing I would say in animation. Um, and, and Andrew and I notice in gaming, if you're going for the job and you have a co nothing against college or <laughs> But if you have the degree and then this kid or another person comes and they have built four or five games, guess who they're going to hire? So if you're an animator, make some animation. I, I'm an, I, well, I was an animator before I started this. I made animation. I won some awards. But that's how I got pretty much in the position I'm in now. Years ago, I worked for a motion capture company, Giant Studios, and we did the motion capture for like Lord of the Rings, Avatar, and basically we would get all of our talent from, from Los Angeles or New York, from, from someplace else. Well, maybe just a couple of weeks ago, uh, I was on the uh, phone talking with them. They've sold, since sold that company to James Cameron, but now there's a, a new company. They were working on something out at Pinewood, one of the big tent poles, and I was uh, talking to him about talent and where could find it. And he said that they could not hire here because they didn't, he was not aware that the talent existed here. And I'm like, are you crazy? I've got like a team of people behind me. Make yourself known. People don't even know what you're what you're able to do, what you can do if, if you don't post it, if you don't show it, if you don't make things. What you do in college isn't the bulk of your portfolio. In fact, we hear this specifically on the game side from the companies when they're hiring. They have seen your same animation that was done for your class project 2,000 times and they never want to see it again. They specifically want to see what you did outside of class and even better, what you actually did for a game. And I know that the animation companies want to see animations that you did for real production outside of school. Yeah, oh my God, yes, yes. Another walk site. That is exactly what the, uh, the recruiters do not want to see ever again. So I'm going to say, just from a recruiter standpoint, that the first thing you need to do when you get out of school and you're looking for work is to get right back on the computer and to start connecting with people. Animation is no longer something that you have to do with just the people around you. It's a global activity. And you can find different skill sets and people with similar interests as you online. So start collaborating with them to get the portfolio things that you need. So if you're an animator, you may need a character designer, a storyboarder, maybe even a new writer. And you can find those people online. Um, you also should look for your jobs online. There are tons of postings. I know with My Animation Life, we have a classified ads where we comb the internet. So there are tons of postings that are constantly being added to it. But you could also comb it yourself. And even better, you could reach out and create these jobs. So there are um, ways for you to place bids on projects that are happening, even as a student. And that's a way for you to generate income. I know as a student, it's 
a little daunting to think about placing bids and being like big and fancy, like a big studio places bids. But you can do that even on a small scale on smaller projects and begin getting the experience you need to build that portfolio. Um, and just know that when you are looking for jobs online, the pay will vary. So you're in a Western country. If you're expecting Western pay, you need to look in another Western country. <laughs> if you are okay with um, your pay scale, you're flexible right now, then I would say look anywhere. And that's a way for you to get a job at a company that you may not be able to get without a higher level of experience here in Georgia. So the reality is, going back to like the future of Georgia entertainment, the, the one thing is first is like really developing more original content out here. One is just the reality of having more people who actually own the the IP. I think the one thing that we have to realize there's so many more outlets, and the reality is is like if you're out there developing these projects, whether it be a game, whether it be a show, uh, the more you can have control over not only your own career but the type of stories we tell. But the other thing is also the reality is is like if we want people to come to town, like the big players, the reason they're coming to town is not because other big players are here. They're coming because they see smaller studios. And what Charles said about the larger studios looking for smaller ones is very true, not just to poach workers, but to straight up buy and use that to establish themselves. That's definitely what uh, how the game industry often works. When an outside large company will come to an area, they're looking for a smaller studio to buy. And Georgia is an incredibly good place to start a new studio. A, the tax credits are there. You might not qualify for them immediately, but they're very achievable. For game development, you need $250,000 in payroll, which means five or six good people, and you can hit that. There are investors who are very interested in this space now. As Lisa said, we've very much been a production hub up until now, but we're starting to become the, that IP hub. In Georgia, our biggest games are all owned by Georgians, and all that money is coming right here. I mean, we love to have Baby Driver and things like that happen here, but those are owned elsewhere. The games are being owned here. We're starting to see more of the animation being owned here. And that means bigger studios are going to come pumping money into the community. Incredible. The state is actively working to build this industry. It's not just saying, oh, yeah, it's nice. Make it happen. They're out there making this happen right now. I feel like we really fail is that we really don't encourage college students. We don't really encourage people while they're in school to create content, to really think seriously about it. We kind of say it, but the reality is we kind of say it in a way where it's kind of like, I don't think any of, I guarantee if I talk to most of you, you'll admit that most professors, when they say it, you don't really believe they honestly want you to actually create your own show. But again, for Georgia, that's that, that collective effort, that collective energy, that is what's going to keep bringing people here because they're going to come where people, they're excited. I mean, that's that's exactly what happened in L.A. I mean, it's, 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 it's an old story. Everybody moved from New York to L.A., way, way back, like 100 years ago, because they were trying to get away from there. But because all these people moved at the same time or were creating this content, it made Hollywood. Hollywood didn't exist. I definitely agree that when you're in school, you're pushed to go into the film circuit, more like the festival, where you make your, your thesis or you make your final film and then you put it um, out for um, people to watch at your school's theater or at the local theater, but it never gets further than that. Um, but now we have so many opportunities for distribution that we can start banding together and making um, these shows. Um, one thing I want to say is that 60% of My Animation Life clients come from California, and they're looking for animators in Georgia and artists in Georgia because of not just because we do cost less than the artists on their side, um, but because of our style and because of our work ethic and the way that um, we're so cheerful and upbeat and we're, we're finally people overall. We're good to work with. Uh, so us creating this content is just an opportunity for us to push our own feel onto the animation industry. You've got the feel of New York. You know a New York animator when you work with a New York animator. You know a California animator. And now you can know a Georgia animator as being some of the best animators in the country and some of the best people to work with. One of the things when I'm looking at reels to hire animators or motion designers or, or whatever, I don't care if the work was client work or spec work. I'm looking at the quality of the work. And I may even be more impressed if you tell me it's spec work because when I'm looking at a reel, especially when I'm looking with the artist, I want to know, so what did you do on this? And if it was your idea and you came up with it, then I know that you can think around whatever I can give you. So... Um, if you, you do want to start your own company, I would say, first of all, talk to Lee more and talk to someone like Lee. Make sure that you have a good 
legal foundation for it because you're an, you're an artist. That's what that's what you do. That's what people are, are, are expecting you to do. People who who can who can watch your back and make sure that you're protected legally, that you've got every permit uh, that you need, that you're not just out shooting in somebody's park and then they come and chase you off and you're not even allowed to use the food, footage that you had, that sort of thing. Uh, you don't need to worry about that. You need to you need to build a, a nice team around you. Uh, I want to just emphasize what Lisa said: a team, get a team. Uh, it can be a team with uh, an outsider, a lawyer, accountant, uh, business advisor, etc. It can be an internal team. So you got an animator, concept artist, storyboarder, writer, someone handling biz dev, all of those different areas. But get a team. It, it, there are single-person studios, and they generally have other people who work with them too. The more successful ones are the stronger teams. Uh, the we've got a group. So when you're when you're an artist, you're often told to be creative, that that's what you're good at. And I find it a little offensive when people look down on the business side of art or look at artists as if they are not capable of simple mathematics or reading or <laughs> anything outside of just putting pen to paper. First started, um, when I first started my company, My Animation Life, it's only been a little over two years, just like a sweat thinking about how how short amount of time it's been and how much has happened. Um, but I thought I knew a lot about business and I had to take a lot more business classes. I had to take classes on contract writing and negotiations on bid procurement, on that kind of stuff. And it seemed daunting at first, but if you take small nibbles and just learn one thing at a time and keep building on it, you'll learn a bunch and you don't have to wait until you've learned it all um, to start. You should start because law is something that is constantly changing. Contracts and the way we negotiate with each other and the way we talk to each other are always changing. So go ahead and get your feet wet now now, even if you don't plan on starting your company for the next like three years, five years out or so, go ahead and start getting your feet wet on learning what it takes to build a business, um, why certain businesses um, are the way they are, like what's an LLC, what's an But the trend is going to start happening anyway. So what's happening actually at Georgia Tech now, incoming freshmen, they're actually starting businesses and they are actually grooming them for the next couple of years to actually, when they graduate, they will have their business ready here. It's much easier to start a business here. And what we're seeing, I'm uh, literally down the street at Tech Square, what we're seeing in that area, as far as on the funding side is great. And they're following a lot of our leads. They're looking at entertainment now. I mean, we know that this town is not an entertainment funding type town yet. But they are asking the questions. With the tax credits being a part of it, that's going to attract these investors. Going over and over again about the importance of uh, participating in conferences like this and um, being members of these organizations. So, like, the reality is, is like whether it be from the business side, whether it be the creative side, the more you're a part of these organizations, the more you can not only meet people, but you can influence this conversation. One of the big issues right now is housing in Atlanta. Like, it's it's getting super expensive. I think for most of you, if you're going to start your careers here, you're, those are questions you're going to be asking, like, where do I live? Where do I go? These are all things that these, all these organizations are a part of all these conversations, everything from funding and everything else. The more stuff you're doing, the more you're talking to people, the more you're interfacing, the better it's going to be. But the reality is, is the only way this industry grows is you actually have to participate. You can't just come to events like this and show up and then go home. You have to keep being engaged. And trust me, even us, we actually need to hear you. Like, if you see something you don't like, we need to hear that. This is stuff we care about, but also we need to fix this stuff and we need to put this stuff in place. Try getting in um, with an organization in California or in New York um, of any of the caliber of these organizations here. It'll be extremely difficult. But here in Georgia, you can get in on the ground floor. The thing about Georgia, we are, we are incredibly friendly and we all do try and help each other out when we can but we also like to work with people that we know so if you are a part of this organization you get to know people they get to know you uh then they they can refer you. we have also passed a post-production tax credit that'll be starting in january so starting to see a lot of movement on the vfx side of things with uh, special effects side of things and as you guys know that's a big part of the movie business it's happening right here in georgia specifically atlanta wh where we are right now there's there's nothing that can compare to this anywhere that i've ever seen and maybe you guys might seem different, but I'm literally grew up in LA and literally in the backyard of Hollywood. And 
the opportunity here, if you really want to get in this industry, and I'm being a little broad from film, digital entertainment, music, any of that, it couldn't be a better place to be. Basically now, if you go shoot your movie in Timbuktu, you can bring it here to Atlanta and now the post-production companies will, uh, will be able to get the tax credit. Right now, New York is the only place that has that where you can shoot somewhere. So we will be one of the only ones. And what's great about that, before I hand it over, is right now post-production is basically a, an expense inside of a film. You basically work for hire if they hire you here which is great too, because we're, we've gotten a couple companies moving here, but companies are now looking because now the post-production companies will be able to get the credit themselves. So the legislature did a great job in creating and crafting uh, this credit. We were allowing post-production on films that were lensed here, that are actually produced here. This expands that significantly and lets the industry build a, a great deal as a result. There is a payroll requirement to qualify for the credit, but then your uh, the amount of credit is based on how much you actually spend above and beyond uh, just the payroll side of things. So it is a little involved. There is a default 20% credit, which is it's great. I mean, if you spend a uh, million dollars on post-production and it's aggregated, so it's not just one production. If you spend a million dollars, there's 200,000 suddenly back right there for your investors, for you to use, for you guys to sell off or whatever. Uh, so it will have a significant impact. And one of the great things that we've seen on the game side is that investors don't know entertainment in not just Georgia, but the Southeast in general. Entertainment is a new area to them. They know real estate. But, uh, but this gives them a confidence level to move into an area they're not really certain of. But on top of that, this is what can kick an investor into saying, all right, I can support this industry. I can get involved. 